Hello everyone, we are going to learn about the chapter light. We all know light is a form of energy that makes always the things which are there everywhere visible to us. So light enable us to see what and all are there in the surrounding. So always we know that light travels in a straight line. How can we know that light travels in a straight line? That can be proved by a simple experiment. So you can see here. There's one candle kept here and a person is viewing it through a straight pipe. So a person, if he view the candle with a straight pipe, he can see the light of the candle. But if the same candle has to be viewed by a pipe which is a bit twisted, then the light gets blocked. That shows that the light will travel only in a straight line. So the path of light gets blocked when the object covers the source of light. And this is illustrated by a simple experiment using a candle and a pipe. So based on the interaction of the light with an object, we classify them into three types. First one is the transparent object. Transparent object allow the light to pass through them completely. Example is glass. The second is called translucent object through which light passes through them but only partially. So if you apply oil on a paper or a butter paper, you can see some diffuse light coming through it but it's not a very clear light. Third object is the opaque object which do not allow any light to pass through them. Example, a table or a book are the example for the opaque. So, transparent object allow every light to pass through them. Translucent allow only little amount of light to pass through them. We cannot see the other side clearly. Opaque object do not allow the light to pass through them. Luminous and illuminated object. Any object that generates light they are called luminous object. They have their own light will be there. So most objects around us are illuminated. They appear to be bright because some of the light falls onto them. For example, here we have the sun which is luminate object, luminous object. And the moon doesn't have its own light but it is illuminated because of the, uh, it gets the light it reflects the light from the sun. So hence we feel that the moon is also illuminated. So here sun is said to be the luminous object. Moon is said to be non-luminous object. Image. An image is an optical representation of an object. So image can either be a real image or it can be a virtual image. So Anything what we are seeing the reflection over an object is called the image. Now real image, the image which can be obtained or formed on a screen is said to be real image. And in real image, the ray of light actually meet after reflection. So you can see here, this is a mirror. This is a concave mirror. And this is the incident ray which are coming. And after striking onto the smooth surface, it is getting reflected. So you can see here all the parallel rays which are coming, they are getting reflected. And all these reflected rays, they are meeting at a point. These are called, this is called focus point and real image is formed here. So the image which is formed and can be obtained on a screen is called the real image. Whereas the virtual image, the image we cannot obtain on a screen, those are called virtual image. And in virtual image, uh, the images appear to meet, but they do not actually meet. So this can be seen in a convex mirror. So you can see here the incident ray is coming and getting reflected. Here all parallel incident rays are coming and they are getting reflected. So they do not meet at a point. Uh, but we draw the dotted lines backward and we can get the image. So 
this image cannot be obtained on a screen those image is said to be virtual image so now let's see the difference between the real image and virtual image so real image light rays actually meet to form a real image whereas in virtual image light do not meet to form a virtual image the image is generally inverted in virtual image the image is generally erect the image obtained on a screen in a real image whereas in virtual image the image cannot be obtained on a screen and the last point this image is in front of the mirror and behind the lens whereas in virtual image the image is behind the mirror and in front of the lens so here we are going to learn about few new new terms erect image an image is said to be erect if the image is formed on the same side up as that of the object so here you can see it is a erect image this is a object and the image is formed and it is also erect the opposite of erect image is inverted image so the image will be called inverted only if it is upside down as compared to that of the object so you can see here the object is erect but the image formed is inverted so these are the terms erect and inverted when a ray of light falls on a surface it undergoes the three phenomena that is reflection refraction and absorption so when it falls on an object most of the light will be absorbed refraction of light means it's a phenomena when light bends and travel from one medium transparent medium to another medium so we have to learn in this chapter about reflection so when light is incident on a certain surface it either get reflected or bounce back so i hope you understood about the incident the light which comes from a source that is called incident and when it get to a smooth surface it get reflected or bounce back so this phenomena is called the bouncing of and this bouncing phenomena is called the reflection so what is reflection of light so reflection of light can be defined as a phenomenon of an object that throws back the light that falls on it hence when the reflection occur it changes its path a highly polished surface which is very smooth enough to reflect the good fraction of incident light is on it is called a mirror now based on the reflecting surface we classify the mirror as plane mirror concave mirror and convex mirror so we are going to learn one by one first we learn about the plane mirror what are the characteristics of the plane mirror the image which is formed by a plane mirror is always virtual and erect so i hope you remember what does the term virtual and erect means now the size of the image which is formed on a plane mirror is same as that of the object and the distance of the object from the mirror is equal to the distance of the image from the mirror that is the image distance is equal to the object distance now if we increase or decrease the distance between the object and the mirror the distance between the image and the mirror also will increase and decrease respectively in the same manner if the distance between the object and the mirror increases same point the size of the image also will decrease or increase vice versa so here this is an diagram you can see this is a object this is the plane mirror and you can see here this is the incident ray getting reflected incident ray getting reflected so you can see here the image is formed here by the plane mirror and it is of the same height as that of the object so this is the object this is the image formed you can see here bc is the distance of the object from the mirror plane mirror 
and you can see CD is the distance of the image from the mirror. So the distance of BC is equal to the distance CD. Now uses of plane mirror. The regular reflection caused by a plane mirror can be used to record the pictures for television shows. The plane mirror is used to make periscopes. So if a person is underneath some trunk or somewhere, he can view what is there on top by using of the plane mirror. So you can see here plane mirror is there, another plane mirror is here. So the light comes, strike, get reflected, strike here again falls onto the eyes. The same mechanism is used in the microscope to illuminate the object what we are observing. Lateral inversion, this is another term related to the plane mirror. So plane mirror reverses an image. So we might have seen, this means that when we see our image in a plane mirror, we always feel that the right side appears to the left, on the left and the left side of the object is seen on the right side of the mirror. So only the sides are interchanged and the image do not appear upside down. It is not inverted, it is erect only. So this phenomena is called lateral inversion. So you might have noticed that ambulance insert in a vehicle, ambulance it will be written in a lateral inversion manner so that the person other driver which is ahead of the ambulance can read it in the right way when they look through their rear view mirror. Spherical mirror. So unlike the plane mirror which are completely flat, spherical mirror they are curved surfaces. Spherical mirrors are of two kinds, concave mirror and convex mirror. A shining steel spoon will be representing the convex mirror as well as the concave mirror. So the front view which is bent inward will act like a concave mirror and the back side of the spoon which is bulging outward will represent as a convex mirror. Concave mirror. A concave mirror is spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is always the inner side. It is also known as converging mirror. Why? Because as a parallel beam of light after reflection on a concave mirror they converge at a point. So this is a concave mirror. The mirror whose reflecting surface is concave is always called concave mirror. So reflecting surface will be concave. The concave mirror reflect the parallel rays of light away after the reflection all will converge. They are meeting at a point, focus point in a mirror. So always we say that a concave mirror is a converging mirror. So here is a diagram. You can see the incident ray falls and this is a concave mirror. Concave mirror, the outer side, we will draw the lines to show the reflecting surface as a concave. So the incident ray comes and hit on to the, into the smooth surface or the polished surface. Now what happened? After reflecting, they all meet. All these incident ray get reflected, meet at a point. So they are converging at a point. Hence, the concave mirror is always said to be a converging mirror. So concave mirror will form always a real inverted magnified image. All this depend upon how far the object is to the mirror. When the object move really close, then always to the mirror, the image form will be erect and it will be virtual. Concave mirror is used by the doctors and dentists to see the enlarged image of the ears, eyes and teeth. So here is the uses of concave mirror to see the enlarged image by the doctor to see the patient's teeth. Okay, dentist. Now in torches, the headlights of the vehicle and search light get to become more strong or straight beam of light. Concave mirror are used 
is refract 